Hi again folks, FPL General here again with episode 9 of the 59th Minute Fantasy Premier League Podcast. I'm recording on Tuesday the 7th of August, so we're just three days away now from kickoff. Uh, just can't wait to get stuck into it again now for another season. Twitter has been an absolute nightmare for me this week to be honest with all the uh, messages and tweets and things like that. So I'm looking forward to game week one deadline passing more than most so that I can breathe again. So some of you will probably have listened to episode 8 which I released on Friday which was 11 tips for FPL success. So if, 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 you, if you didn't hear that one you just check my Twitter page um, or check the Twitter account at 59th Minute Pod and you'll find that one. Uh, some tips ahead of the new season. This episode is going to be slightly different. It's going to, I'm going to talk about my watch list for game week one. So this is the players I'm interested in going into game week one. The players I'll be looking at to form my 15 man squad for Friday. So I think I've got roughly about 25 players, 25 outfield players on my watch list at the moment. I'm not going to talk about goalkeepers tonight because I still don't know what I'm going to do about goalkeepers. And I haven't done, um, I haven't really done any research into it yet. Initial thoughts are probably Ederson for the first few weeks and a four million bench goalkeeper, but I may end up going with rotating four point five million goalkeepers. But keep an eye on on Twitter at FPL General uh, for more information on that towards the end of the week. So I'm going to jump straight in to the to my watch list. So I mentioned this on Friday's podcast. I keep a watch list on the FPL website. Now it tends to be quite big at the start of the season and then I update it every week and it tends to get smaller as the season goes on. Um, so I'm going to start off with forwards. So I think I've got about seven forwards I'm interested in for game week one. I'm just going to list them off first and then I'll just talk a little bit about them. I'm just going to try rattle through this podcast as quickly as possible as well, just keep it nice and short. First name, Aguero. Then I've got Aubameyang, Harry Kane, Firmino. Arnautovic, Zaha and Josh King. So I'm just going to talk a wee bit about some of these um, and maybe some of the players that are not on it as well. So I put a I put a draft team on Twitter last night. Some of you may have missed that as well. Um, so I'll just talk about who is in, who's in my current draft as well, going through each position. So strikers at the moment, I've got Aguero, Arnautovic and Josh King as my front three now. All of this obviously can change between now and Friday. We know what it's like uh, with the tinkering and especially with the transfer deadline closing on Thursday, there's probably going to be a lot of moves that are going to change our plans. But that's what I've got for now, Aguero, Arnautovic and Josh King. Um, Aguero looked very sharp in the Community Shield. I think he's a, I wouldn't say he's a must-have, but I think he's going to be pretty pretty popular pick for game week one and, he, and he's, he's pretty nailed on to be in my side alongside Mo Salah. They're probably the two two players I'm most set on uh, at this point. Uh, Arnautovic, I'm a big fan of. He was superb for me last season. I think I brought him in game week 32 on a wild card and he was just superb towards the end of the season. And now that he's moved, been reclassified as a striker, that doesn't really put me off him too much. He's still 7 million. I think it's a, it's a very generous price for Arnautovic. So good chance I'll be starting the season with him as well. And then the third striker spot, I've got Josh King, 6.5 million. He's, he's had a good pre-season. He, he could be on penalties. Bournemouth have good fixtures to begin with. Um, he actually finished pretty strongly towards the last season, towards the end of last season as well, if I remember correctly. So definitely someone I'm thinking about, Josh King, uh, at 6.5. I know there's a lot of options around this price point, um, but he's the one I'm, I'm looking at at the moment, maybe to start with. The other ones I mentioned then, Harry Kane, back in training today. Uh, a lot of people uh, think he may, he may not start game week one because of the World Cup but I just think a lot of these players um, I mean how much rest do they really need you know they're, they're professional athletes and, and I know Kane himself wants to play in game week one so I wouldn't be surprised at all if he's on the team sheet uh, on Saturday or Sunday whenever whenever Spurs play um, 12.5 million Kane is expensive um, he's 32% owned which you wouldn't think uh, go, going by FPL Twitter because I've seen him in very, very few teams on, on social media, but 32% owned in the game itself. So he's definitely he's definitely one to keep keep in mind, even if you're not getting him for game week one. Maybe if you plan to, maybe it might be an idea to leave some cash aside or just have a plan in place if he, if he does 
uh, start buying them in right right away. Uh, game week one, game week two. I don't believe in this August curse. Um, it's a little rubbish. I think it's Kane's been unlucky, um, and and I, I I'm pretty sure he'll break he'll break the curse this year. So it just depends how how many he scores. Moving on from Kane, uh, Firmino. So another player people think maybe won't start because of the World Cup, but I think he's playing. Liverpool have got their last pre-season game tonight and he started up front, so again, no reason to, as to why he won't play game week one. Um, I think he's around 9.5 million, I think. I, I, I'm, the reason I'm not interested in him at the moment is I'm probably I'm more interested in, in a double up in midfield probably for Liverpool. Um, Salah and Mane probably interest me more than Salah and Firmino, so I just think there's loads of good striking options. Um, and Manny is definitely high on the on the watch list, so that's the reason I'll probably uh, ignore Firmino for game week one. But definitely, really good option. He was he was very he was very good for me last season, so he's on the watch list for that reason. Zaha then's another one like Arnautovic. He's been reclassified, but again, it, that that doesn't really put me off. The big question with Zaha is whether he's actually going to stay at Palace. So the next what forty eight hours are going to be going to be telling for Zaha he could easily move somewhere so we just need to wait and see what happens there but if he stays at Palace um, and he doesn't go AWOL because he didn't get a move which I don't think he would um, he's definitely someone I'm interested in as well I mean again very strong end to last season and I expect him just to pick up from where he left off so the next one then uh, Aubameyang I don't have him in my squad at the moment. I'm probably just going to wait and see with Arsenal. Uh, we don't really know exactly how they're going to line up under the new coach. Lacazette, uh, Aubameyang's 11, Lacazette's 9.5. Um, I, I would love to go for Lacazette. If I knew if he was nailed on to play, I would get Lacazette all day long for the 1.5 million saving. Uh, I do think Aubameyang is going to, going to score a lot of goals this season, but... Whether he justifies the one and a half million more than Lacazette, we'll just have to wait and see. So I'm probably just going to wait for those two and just see how they settle in, uh, how they start the season. They've got Arsenal have uh, Man City and Chelsea in the first two games as well. So I, I think just wait and see with those. Um, I'm actually probably unlikely to get any Arsenal players for game week one. Uh, the strikers, Bamiang's probably has the most chance of being in my side, but again, I'm probably just going to wait and see. So that's the strikers. As I said, seven strikers I'm interested in. Aguero, Aubameyang, Firmino, Kane, Arnautovic, Zaha and Josh King. Going to move on to midfielders. Mo Salah, nailed on in my team, 100%. The others I'm interested in are Mane, as I mentioned. Eriksen, for the same price. Mares, Alexis Sanchez. Richarlison, Jota. And I've got Shirla here at Fulham on the watch list as well. Probably won't get him, but I will be keeping an eye on him first few weeks. So, as I said, Salah's nailed on. He's going to be my captain game week one for sure. Unless he something happens to him tonight, which would throw a spanner in the works for most people. One of the big debates I'm weighing up this week is Manny versus Eriksen. So, in my current draft, I've got Eriksen. But I do have a strong gut feeling for, for Manny to start the season. Uh, Liverpool have got West Ham Palace, Brighton, Leicester first four, so I can see them scoring a lot of goals. And I think it could pay off to, to go for the Liverpool double up, whether it be Manny, uh, Manny Salah or, or Salah Firmino. But as I said, I, I just I'm leaning towards Manny, Manny and Salah. Eriksen, we know he's a very consistent FPL player. He does it season after season, but the Spurs good chance they, they could be missing a couple of players because uh, a lot of their players went pretty far in the World Cup so they, they, they may struggle to start with I don't think they will as much as some people are saying I mean Newcastle Fulham for two games you couldn't really ask for a much nicer start than that so I wouldn't be surprised if Spurs just uh, come out of the blocks firing even if they've got a few kids playing um, I don't see any reason to avoid them because of that so that's the reason Ericsson is Ericsson does have a very good chance of, of making it into my squad for game week one. I'm probably not going to get Kane, but Ericsson is, is, is a high possibility. Um they've got they do play Man United in game week three then. Obviously it's a trickier game, but first four games uh, are not too bad for Spurs. 
I mentioned Mares. then. He's my pick of the City midfielders at this point. Now, I mean, there's so many of them to choose from. It's hard, it's hard to know which one to go for. And whichever one we do go for, Pep's going to troll us anyway. So Mares at 9 million, I'm definitely interested in. Um, he looked okay in the, in the community shield. He, he wasn't spectacular, but we know what Mares can do from, from his Leicester days. So I'm a big fan. Um, I prob- Sane came off at half time in the community shield. I don't know if that was uh, if he picked up a knock or anything there. So we need to monitor that as well. I see Bern- Bernardo Silva's in a lot of teams now after, after he played very well on Sunday. Um, seven point five million. I just don't like I don't like uh, getting players for game week one that I know I'm going to have to sell in a couple of weeks time. Now, if if I'm planning an early wild card, which I am, maybe then there's a case for maybe getting Bernardo Silva because it looks like it looks like he's probably going to play the first couple of games. Pep's been talking him up uh, in the last day or two, so he does look pretty good for game week one. But after that, we don't really know. As I say, we can never trust Pep. And, and for that reason, I'm probably just going to avoid him game week one. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne is probably the one I'm going to want long term from City. Uh, again, he could miss out game week one because of the World Cup. But he's definitely the one I'm probably going to be looking to get in if I wildcard early. Um, Sterling, nobody's talking about him. He's 11 million. He's expensive. But his his figures last season were just were just outstanding um, and there's no reason why he can't do do something similar again and, and he could well justify 11 million this season um, but again he's just a wait and see with, with De Bruyne um, for the first first week or two so that's kind of Liverpool Spurs Man City midfield covered I'm, I'm probably going to avoid Chelsea and Arsenal midfielders to start with um, probably down to the new coaches there as well I just I'm, I'm kind of cautious when there's new managers there because we don't know what's going to happen, how they're going to set up. You can't read too much into the preseason games either, um, because they'll have all the big guys back, and we just don't know how they're going to line up. Um, I, I was keeping an eye on Pedro at Chelsea, but he, he didn't really he didn't really do enough for me in the Community Shield to to warrant a place. Um, there's there's no guarantee even that he's going to start, so that's enough for me just to avoid him as well. He's he's another just wait and see how he goes, if. If Hazard or Willian were to leave, then maybe he would become an option. But at this stage, it doesn't look like either of those two will leave. So Pedro will probably remain, uh, you know, a rotation risk like he was last season. Arsenal midfield, there's, I mean, you've got Mkhitaryan who I like, but again, is he going to fit? Is he going to start in in Emery's system? We don't know. Ozil is right down in price now from previous seasons, eight point five million. But again, I'm just going to wait and see with him. Maybe he can. You know, reignite himself as an, an FPL asset under Emery in a new system, a new manager. But again, there's no way I'm going with Ozil game week one. Alexis Sanchez then, 10.5 million. The thing about his price point, 10.5, there's just so many good options at, you know, 9, 9.5. You've got the likes of Marius, Eriksson and Mane. So I just think they probably offer better value. But Sanchez, Sanchez could pay off for those who go for him early. Um, he's probably the only attacking player from United I'd even consider um, it, it's usually defensively or or, or or the goalkeeper I look at from United but Sanchez is on my watch list and I haven't ruled out going for him yet but as I say the likes of Manny Eriksson I think they're just better value and they'll probably just win out for me for, for game week one some of the cheaper midfielders then that I'm looking at Richarlison I like at 6.5 we know what he did when he was at Watford under Marco Silva, so we're expecting him to to return to that kind of form. And I think I think at six point five million, he he's worth a gamble. Um, he may not he may not start the season well, but at six point five, it's very easy to, to get him in. And if, if he doesn't perform, it's quite easy to move to someone else in because there's a lot of options around that six point five million price point. One of those is the guy at Wolves, Diego Yota. I mentioned him on the podcast on Friday. I don't usually go for promoted sides but he's one who's definitely interesting me um, at 6.5 and Wolves I think have got a good start they've got Everton Leicester they do have Man City game week 3 but then they've got West Ham so it's not a, it's not an awful run of fixtures to start with and the squad that Wolves have put together I expect them to, to start the season well so the likes of Jota could be, could be a shrewd pick for game week 1 Going back to Richarlison at 6.5, a lot of people are asking me uh, about Siggy. So Sigurdsson, 7.5, you know, he's, again, a proven FPL player. 
he'll probably be on all set pieces you know probably playing in the number 10 role he could he could do very well this season but what's weighs it for me is just 1 million saving so Rosarison 6.5 Siggy 7.5 that 1 million can go a long way uh, in the rest of your squad you know it, it can improve two positions almost um so th- that's the reason I'll probably go for Richarlison over Siggy to begin with, um, and then obviously reevaluate things when it comes to playing the wild card. If Siggy's on fire, we may have to we may have to go back to the FPL god. Fulham, I'm not going to get any Fulham midfielders to start with, but I am going to keep an eye on Shirley at six million. Uh, quality signing for them. You, we know what he you know he was he didn't get probably didn't get an awful lot of game time when he was in the in the league with Chelsea but he's 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 undoubtedly a very very good player and he and he could he could do very well for Fulham this season and 6 million could could well be a very very good price there's I've seen uh, uh, Carney in a few teams as well at 5 million so he's another not going to get him to start with but he could well prove to be the best 5 million midfielder but again I'm just going to wait and see so that's the midfielders again: Salah, Mane, Eriksen, Mares, Sanchez, Richarlison, Jota, and maybe Sherla. So I'm just going to get my current draft up on the screen here again for those that maybe missed it last night. I currently have Salah, Eriksen, Mares, Richarlison, and then I've got a 4.5 million uh, bench player, which is Steven. So I'm currently set up with a 3-4-3. Um, Moving on now to defenders. I'm going to list them again first of all. Mendy at Man City. Van Dijk. Juan Bissaka. Peltier. So that's the two 4 million options who look like they're going to start the season as, as regular starters. Which will be a, a big bonus for us. PVA 5.5. And Ben Davies at 6. Or Ben Davis I should say. A lot of my Welsh followers give me a hard time when I say Davies, so I've got to get that right this season. Ben Davis. Currently in my squad, I've got Van Dijk, Mendy, um, Wan Bissaka, Peltier, and I've actually got Tompkins in there as well as a four point five. So Mend- Mendy, first of all, six million coming back from a very serious injury, but he's he looks like he's he's fit and sharp. Played again in the Community Shield, so I think he can be. I think he can be one of the highest point scoring defenders in the game this season. So I'm looking to start with him possibly. I think he's the best of the Man City uh, defenders. Centre backs, there's too many of them. There's going to be rotation there. We don't know if Walker's going to start the season. Um, and I think he's 0.5 more expensive than Mendy anyway. I could be wrong on that, but I think he's 6.5. Ederson's probably the safest route into the City uh, defence. Um, and I actually. I could end up going with Mendy and Ederson to start the season with. So I'm expecting plenty of clean sheets from City again this season. A lot of people are looking at Liverpool defence. There's a lot of debate over Van Dijk and Robertson. They're both six million. Uh, both excellent options in my opinion. It really comes down to gut feeling here and, and which one you prefer. You know, Van Dijk's probably a, a bigger goal threat, even though he didn't score any goals last season. He's a big threat from set pieces. Uh, but then you've got Robertson, who's bombing up the wing. Uh, he's got assist potential. He got he got at least five assists last season, I think, possibly even more. So it's interesting now tonight. Liverpool, as I said, are playing pre-season, their last pre-season game, and Moreno started ahead of Robertson. Um, but I wouldn't worry about that. I still expect Robertson to be the first choice left back uh, when the league rolls around this weekend. So again, it's up. It's really a. It's, it's a tough one. It's one I'm mulling over. I've got Van Dijk at the moment. It's a gut feel. I just feel maybe he underperformed last season in terms of goals scored. So if I go for him, I'm kind of banking on him to get a few goals this season. Um, but again, there's very little between those two and I don't really think you can go wrong going with either one. Um, I do think it probably is a good idea to include one of those in your team. A couple of people have asked me about Alexander-Arnold as well because he's cheaper, I think he's 5 million. I just don't like him because Nathaniel Klein's there as well, and I just can see them sharing game time this season, so that's enough for me just to avoid. I don't want any doubts over my my players, especially going into game week one. I want nailed on starters, um, and that's probably why Van Dijk's going to be my choice. 
Juan Bissaka and Peltier then. We've got the two 4 million players who look like they're going to play. Bednarak at Southampton is another one who looks like he's going to play at 4 million, but there's probably more chance of him losing his place because I think there's a couple of injuries at centre-back there at, at Southampton. And another reason I'm not going for Bednarak is because I just don't like getting defenders in from Mark Hughes' teams. I just have no faith in them, keeping clean sheets. Um, a lot of people are going for Cedric. I'm just going to avoid uh, Southampton defence. Um, I think they had a f- pre-season friendly a couple of days ago against one of the German sides, and they lost 3-0. So that's just enough for me, again, just to avoid. I think Cedric's a player that he's got all the potential to be a brilliant fantasy player, but the Saints, just I just don't see them keeping enough clean sheets. And... Cedric's stats over the last couple of seasons, for all the attacking he does do, he's got very few uh, attacking returns. Um, I don't, I can't think off the top of my head if I've ever seen him scoring a goal. Um, so that's, again, I'm just going to avoid Southampton. Crystal Palace have got quite a few good options, so a lot of us are going to go for Juan Bissaka, 4 million enabler. Um Hopefully he can nail down that spot because obviously he saves a lot of cash for us. There's, I've got Tompkins, as I said, as a 4.5. I think he's probably the best of the 4.5 million options um, to start the season with. Palace have got Fulham, Liverpool, Watford, Southampton to start with. So it's not too bad aside from the Liverpool game. Tompkins scored a couple of goals last season. He seems to have picked up a knack for getting into goal scoring positions over the last probably 12 months so that's obviously a plus for us so he's one I'm looking at and I don't I don't mind the double up with Tompkins and Juan Bissaka because Juan Bissaka would probably spend most of his time on my bench anyway so it's not really a double up because I would only ever really start one of them and Juan Bissaka would only be co- coming in then if if, uh, if someone was injured for me so I don't mind I don't mind the double up on Palace Van Aanholt obviously is one I would like to get in. My probably my best ever FPL transfer was Game Week thirty eight last season. I sold Maguire for Van Aanholt. Maguire got zero points, uh, and Van Aanholt got eighteen. So thanks to Van Aanholt, I I, uh, I got my goal of a, a top five hundred last season. Without him, I probably wouldn't have. So I feel I feel loyal to him now, and I feel like I should he should be in my Game Week one team, and he and he could be so. Again, I'll be doing more tinkering with defence uh, between now and Friday. Um, and I've, I've, Van Aanholt has been tweeting about his own... He's got his own FPL league set up as well, and I've entered it, so I probably I probably should put him in my side. Ben Davis is another player I'm interested in. A lot of people, as I said, are not really keen on Spurs to start with, but there's no reason why Ben Davis can't start the season well. Yeah, as I said, Newcastle and Fulham first two games, you could you could see Spurs getting two clean sheets there, and Davis always offers the attacking uh, potential assists and goals. Um, he was actually a player who started very strongly last season. I had him in game week one last season. I remember, um, and I think he might have been the top point scorer in the game after three or four weeks. So he he played a big part in me in my good start last season. So obviously I've, I've got fun memories there, and he's definitely one I'm looking at. I've seen David Luiz in quite a few teams, 5.5 million. It's probably mainly because it's a cash saver for a, a premium a defender. The 5.5 million is what is uh, attracting people to him. Chelsea didn't look great to me in the Community Shield defensively especially. So I'm just going to avoid them to start with. And I, I wouldn't really feel comfortable with David Luiz in my, in my game week one team. Um, he, ju- he doesn't score enough goals for me to start with and again Chelsea it's probably going to take Chelsea a while to settle into to Sarri's style of play so they may they, they may not keep too many clean sheets to begin with um, so again that's just enough for me to, to stay away Azpilicueta and Alonso are both 6.5 million very little talk of Alonso uh, on social media I mean he's been an absolute legend for us over the last couple of seasons um, but it remains to see, be seen how he'll perform in, in probably a, more of a flat back four uh, under Sarri. He's probably not going to be as attacking as he was. But again, there's no, there's no reason why he won't still be taking free kicks and things like that. So 
again if you want to if you want to go from game week one by all means do so but I'm just going to hold off and just just wait and see how Chelsea settle into the, the league this season so that's defenders covered again Mendy, Van Dijk, Juan Bissaka, Peltier, PVA and Ben Davis are the ones I'm looking at and uh, James Tompkins as well so that's my watch list there's about 25 players there so I need to pick a squad of 15 from those well 13 because I haven't included goalkeepers tonight again not really sure what I'm going to do with goalkeepers yet I usually go for a premium goalkeeper um, but I am thinking about going for 4.5 goalkeepers to start with this season uh, with, with an early wild card in mind so hopefully that gives you an idea of what I'm thinking about um, let me know as well uh, any players you think you, you're wondering why maybe I haven't included them or if there's any players on my watch list that you're not interested in for any reason, just, just send me a tweet at FPL General or, or leave a comment wherever you are. If you're on uh, iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, wherever else, I see all them comments as well. So just, just let me know your thoughts. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to, I'm not going to do any more tinkering until Friday because, because of this transfer deadline closing on Thursday night, there's going to be, there's definitely going to be transfers that are going to change our plan. So there's not, there's probably not much point doing too much tinkering between now and Friday. Um, I know it's not ideal for people who, who probably work all day Friday. And then we've got the, the Friday evening deadline. So you might, you might not have much time to, to get your team together. So make sure you have a, a good squad together on Thursday night. And then any changes that you need to make on Friday will be just minor changes. So I'm not going to touch my team now until, again until Friday morning. Um and I, I would probably advise you to do the same because again as I say there's probably not much point with all, with with incoming transfers and outgoings and things like that a couple of points to mention before I wrap things up if if you enjoyed the podcast if you found it useful give it a like give it a share retweet all that kind of stuff a review on iTunes is really helpful as well it helps to get the podcast out there a little bit more I mentioned Patreon in my last podcast and um, you can find all the information out about that at patreon.com forward slash FPL general. So I've got a Slack channel now that you can you can access through Patreon. So any questions you have about that, uh, just send me a send me an email or send me a, a DM on Twitter. I I spoke to Asmir Begovic this week on his season of sports podcast. So I tweeted that out earlier today. Um we 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 looked ahead to the to the FPL season. So it's always it's always pretty cool to talk to a to an actual FPL player about FPL. So Asmir was asking me if, if he if I was in his uh, if he was in my team. Sorry. So check that out as well. So it's see the podcast is called Season of Sports, and it's this week's episode. If you skip to about six minutes in, that's when the the Fantasy Premier League section uh, comes in. So it's about 15, 20 minutes long. My my mini league as well. If you want to enter my mini league, you'll find the code for it on my Twitter account. Again, it's at FPL General. Thousands and thousands of people in that mini league. Uh, it ended up at one point last season. It was the number one mini league on the FPL website. I think it finished number three, uh, probably behind the Fantasy Football Scout one and another one. So get into that league. Loads of people in it, and the winner of it will get a place in my Elite 64 mini league for not this season, the season after obviously, so it's worth getting into that one, um, obviously it's pretty hard to win it, but if you do it's, it's, it's a good prize so from from now on I'm going to, these podcasts are going to be every Tuesday, Tuesday night I'm going to record them on Tuesday evenings and, and get them uploaded on Tuesday night so it'll be a weekly thing Um. And usually what I'll do is I'll ask for questions um, from, from the listeners and I'll answer some of them on the podcast as well. I'll look back at the previous game week and I'll, I'll look ahead then to the upcoming game week. So I'm always aiming for about 30 minutes. Um, I know I know a lot of people like the shorter shorter uh, podcast. So especially when it's only me speaking, you don't want to listen to me for too long. So I'll always try to keep them short um, to the point. So all I'm left to say now is good luck for game week one. Happy tinkering. Um, stick to the stick to the tried and trusted players who are guaranteed to play game week one. 
Uh, that's the, that's the main bit of advice uh, you should take away from this one. And enjoy your weekend. Hopefully, it's hopefully you get a good start to the season. And I'll I'll be back on Tuesday with episode ten. Th- thanks again, folks, for for listening. <laughs>